Hello, beautiful people. Yes, I have crawled out from under the woodwork to randomly give you another video after like 10 months. No, probably like three years of not posting any videos. I'm hoping to do a lot more now that I have more time and now that I'm in a much better mental space. But in today's video, we are going to be talking about my September wrap up. So for those who may not know, I actually have a new job. And this new job allows me to listen to audiobooks during work, while I work. And that is like my dream job. It makes me so happy, even though like sometimes I do get in a bit of a slump. But it allowed me to read a lot of books this month. It allowed me to read 15 books. And it also allowed me to get back into ARCs, which I went back into and then kind of fell out of again. But I'll explain that as I get to it. The first book that I read was Business Casual by B.K. Barrison, and I absolutely adored it. Absolutely loved it. Charlie has my heart. Highly recommend. Business Casual is actually the last book in the series. They're all standalones, so they, they're interconnected standalones, so they don't need to be read together. But you'll kind of hear about the other characters while reading it. And I loved uh, Nova's brother. I was obsessed with him, the whole Big Brother vibes, and I started listening to his and his partner, I think her name's Evie or Evelyn, I started listening to their audiobook and I just could not get into it. Like, the minute I was in this man's brain, was not interested anymore. So, um, I'll probably will go back to it, but I just could not get into it at that point. And uh, then I listened to a fan fiction on Spotify. It was a fan fiction that I'd been dying to read for the longest time. And the author is actually releasing a published book soon. So I really wanted to try out her work before that happened. And it was Draco Malfoy and the Mortifying Ordeal of Being in Love. And I was mortifyingly in love. <laughs> I loved this fan fiction. Um, it was cute, there was adventure, there was, uh, it just, it took me on a journey and I loved it. I loved every second of it, especially when, I mean, it's not really fair to compare it, but it was nice to have Draco and Hermione in something cutesy after having them in Manacled and having them just pain and anguish and sadness and still love Manacled. But this was nice. Thank you to the people who recorded the audiobooks and put them on Spotify. I would love to listen to some more once I get back into my Draco and Hermione, my Hermione era. Then I got an arc for The Spiral of Life for Francesca McMahon. And it was a young adult kind of Percy Jackson vibes. And I actually loved it. It's based on Celtic mythology, and there is um, the main character, Eileen, who's a blacksmith, and she gets thrown into this world of Celtic mythology, and she has her freaking snarky psychic, Kelpie, Rodain, and there's another character with her as well, I'm not remembering the name. But she was very cute as well. She was like the calm to Eileen's chaos. Then the next arc I listened to was called Horror for Weenies, which was actually so much fun. It's like a, it's kind of a coffee table book and it's not the only coffee, coffee table book I listened to this month. Horror for Weenies is perfect for any horror movie fan or even any person who is too afraid to watch horror movies but still wants to know what they're about. This book went through the genre changing horror movies pretty much in the past, I want to say 20 years or so. No, it's it probably is even more than that. It's had it had psycho in it, which was still in black and white. My my timelines and my dates are horrible, so like forgive me, but yeah, it was so good. 
it gave you fun facts about the movie. It told you what happened. It gave you background. It was so informative to someone who loves horror movies and, you know, really wanted to know more about it. Especially the horror movies that I myself am too scared to watch. Texas Chainsaw Massacre? Can't do it. Do I know the plot? Yes, I do. So there's that. That's fun. <laughs> then a friend of mine and I, Buddy, read Local Woman Missing by Mary Kubica. And I sort of have like a love-hate relationship with that book. I didn't hate it, but it wasn't the greatest. It made me realize that I'm possibly not much of a thriller fan. If I can figure out the thriller, oh, sorry. If I can figure out the plot twist, like 10 pages in, then I don't want it. Then I'm not interested. Then it's like, meh. Like Verity, for example, did not see that coming. Did not see it coming. Give me a thriller that actually thrills me. Unfortunately, this one did not. It had a lot of cheap tricks and just random, random stuff. Especially when I'd already figured out what would happen. So yeah. I'll still probably like check out all of her other books as well. But wasn't a fan of that. And then going on the thriller... Tr keeping, up, keeping up with the thriller trend. I also read Only One Left by Riley Sager. The, this was our book club pick of the month. And I already had a very rocky relationship with Riley Sager. It bothers me that he uses a kind of feminine sounding pseudonym to try and get people to read his books. I don't like the way he writes women. They're all kind of crazy in his books. And this one as well. This one was kind of interesting. So I didn't one star it. But it still was weird. The things that were happening and the reasons for those things happening were just did not make any sense and I did not agree with them and I did not agree with the way he portrayed women in this book either. So yeah. I'll, again, I'll still probably listen to slash read more of his books especially now that it's spooky season but I don't know if I'll enjoy it. And then going on the trend of books that I didn't enjoy, I have made plans with a friend to go on a road trip pretty soon. So then I was like, you know what, I want to get into this road trip vibe and I want to see if there's any road trip books available to read. And I stumbled across one called Road Trips and Romance by Kimmy Loth. And the cover looked so cute. Like the cover of all of her books are so cute. But my problem with this book was the girl going on the road trip had a boyfriend and she was going on this road trip with another man and she was doing things with this other man. Not even like explicit things, but like small things that just bothered me. And it's like, if you're so unhappy with your partner, just, just break up. Like, I mean, she obviously eventually does. And then there was also the subplot of the fact that her mother who'd passed away had told her to never kiss a boy until you're at least engaged. And then she kind of like sticks to that and then kisses a boy without getting engaged anyway. And I just, it was just, it was just a mess. I, 10 out of 10 would not recommend. <laughs> uh. Then my friend and my buddy read a science fiction book, a YA science fiction called Skyward by Brandon Sanderson. And that we thoroughly enjoyed. It went, it took my mind from being down here to being like up here. It was so much fun. I loved the characters. I'm so attached to them. I'm kind of struggling at the moment because I'm supposed to be reading the novellas. But I don't think the novellas were written by Brandon Sanderson. So I'm struggling to get into them. And you're apparently supposed to read the novellas before you read book three. 
Let me know if that's the case or if you've read it without reading the novellas, but the novellas kind of threw me into a bit of a slump and I couldn't carry on with them. I'm kind of taking a break from them now, but that means I'll never get to book three. And I want to know what happens to my babies. And then while I waited for my friend to finish Skyward so that we could start the second book together, I listened to Not In Love by Ali Hazelwood and I was actually heartbroken. I was heartbroken. I love Ali Hazelwood. Or at least I loved one of her books and one of her two, one, one of her novellas. And I thought I was hooked. And then I read Love on the Brain and I was like, okay, this is okay. It's not the love hypothesis, but you know, it's okay. Um, not in love. I was not in love. She very clearly states in the beginning of the book, this is not like her other books. This is sort of darker. This is not as cutesy as, you know, Love on the Brain and The Love Hypothesis. You know, the characters have trauma. They have things that they're going through and things that they're working through. And that was great for them. But I just could not. It's very smutty. Like overly smutty. I was very smutted out at this point. Um, I think August I'd listened to a lot of smut. Um, so I was very smutted out which is why a lot of my books were thrillers and YAs and this was a lot of smut. A lot. The characters were okay. But it, it went on for very long. It was Anyway, then we went on to Skyward Book 2, which is Star Sight. Again, loved, uh, obsessed with the world, obsessed with the characters, obsessed with the new characters that we got, even though they're not that great in the novellas. Yeah, I, I love this universe, and considering this is apparently Sanderson's least popular books, so I'm very excited to read more of Sanderson's work. Then I read another arc, well, I listened to another arc called How to Piss Off Men by Kyle Prue. It was narrated by the author as well, so that was cool. Kyle Prue is on TikTok and he, his TikTok videos are things to say to piss off men. And that was, the this book was a culmination of that, where each page was something that you can say to piss off men. Um, I did kind of expect a bit more from this. I expected it to be a little bit more funny. Um, he does tell one or two stories and anecdotes throughout. And it's a great coffee table book, again, especially if you have family coming over and you want to piss them off. It will be hilarious. But yeah, there was a part at the end where his, him and his mom kind of do like a Cuban A thing which was very nice i would totally listen to a podcast of him and his mom taking in callers and giving an advice she seems like a sweetheart and i th actually thoroughly enjoyed that that was my last arc i did start one but i'm having issues because my phone doesn't work with the net galley app which is very frustrating and you can't listen to it on browser. If anybody knows a workaround to that, of how I can listen to this going forward, let me know. But yeah, thank you to all of the wonderful authors that gave me an arc of their book to listen to in exchange for an honest review. I actually surprisingly enjoyed most of them, slash all of them. Then it gets to the end of the month and we're listening to The Never King by Nikki St. Crow. And we did not enjoy it at all. It was dark which that's what you're into cool i have yet to find a dark romance that i enjoy let me know down below if you have any i mean i've read katie roberts and i enjoy her i don't know if that counts as dark romance probably not uh, but i enjoy her i just dark romances are not fun to me I'm into the goofy guys, the cute guys, the funny ones, styles from Teen Wolf, all my Teen Wolf girlies, you know what I'm talking about. And I enjoyed the Bonds of Tie series, the first few books, so it wasn't the fact that it was reverse harem that bothered me. It was just none of these boys were fun, the story didn't make sense, the concept was eh, 
Like, what is the point of Neverland if Peter is grown up? Why did none of these women have males? Why is it only the females getting kidnapped? Why did these females continue to have children if they knew they would get kidnapped and driven to madness? It just, it just didn't make sense to me. It didn't work. I'm so sorry. I did not enjoy it. Then I thought, okay, since we're on a Peter Pan kind of streak, let's carry on with Hooked, which we started months ago and could not get into. Still could not get into it. Still did not enjoy it. Would not recommend. The character of Hook, of James, whatever he, he calls himself, did not do it for me. Then he went and did a whole bunch of shifty, horrible things. Did not do it for me. Basically just did not do it for me. I'm still keen to read the rest of the series and see how they take other villains and switch them around. But yeah. Did not do it for me. Then I was kind of like in a bit of a slump, trying to figure out what to listen to at work, trying to figure out where I was going, not really feeling anything. And then a colleague of mine suggested Maybe This Time by Cara Bastone. And oh my god, I was obsessed. It is a, a full cast. It's a time travel book. It has, um, oh, what's his, the guy from Schitt's Creek, uh, David's husband. He was the male narrator and he, his character was fun. He was goofy, right up my alley. I had so much fun with this one. It actually motivated me to listen to another one of hers, which was Love at First Psych. And while I didn't enjoy Love at First Psych as much as I did maybe this time, I mean, <laughs> listening to Hans from Frozen being a male love interest was was definitely something. It was still very cute. It was still very cute. I still very much enjoyed it. And I'm looking forward to listening to more from this author. And yeah, guys, that was it. That was my September. It was exhausting. It was a lot of fun. And now we're in spooky season. Woo! I hope you all have a great morning, afternoon, evening. Um... And I'll see you guys next time. I promise I will make more of an effort on my videos. <laughs> Alright guys, bye!